Hi folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with Southern Indiana Weather. Uh, it's late for me right now. It's uh, getting close to midnight here on Wednesday night. By the time you're watching this, it may be tomorrow morning, uh, on Thursday morning, but I won't have time to do one of these videos on Thursday evening, so I wanted to get an update out tonight to you. Uh, lots has changed uh, in the forecast, and I want to sort of go through uh, what to expect over the, the next short term. All right. Tonight's video again being sponsored by uh, High Voltage Mobile DJ Services. You can give Nathan a call at 630-9465 or make sure you visit him on the web at djhighvoltage.com. Tell him Southern Indiana Weather sent you. They do a great job with their DJ services. So uh, send, him, uh, send him some business and uh, just give, him, give him a call. All right, real quick, wind chill advisory tonight, uh, really through 1 o'clock tomorrow afternoon uh, for the entire state. We're talking dangerous wind chills with this. Um, bitterly, bitterly cold temperatures tomorrow, tonight, and, and through tomorrow morning. And that's going to be pushing wind chills below, uh, definitely in the negative digits. In fact, if we just go through our product here at 11, well, almost midnight, we're sitting at 19 degrees uh, in Huntingburg at the airport, 22 at the airport in Evansville. And, and if I just switch on the wind chill for you you can see single digits already down to two for uh, and uh, at at, uh, at Washington Airport and and these uh, these wind chills are just going to continue to go down as temperatures fall overnight so we're talking brutally cold wind chills on the way all right now we did have a little snow band that set up this is actually one arctic cold front that's now pushed through we have a second arctic cold front that's going to push through tonight sort of bringing a reinforcing shot of cold air to us as if we need a reinforcing shot of cold air but you'll see what i mean when we get to the temperature wise uh, it, it's looking cold folks and unfortunately it looks like this cold is going to stick around for a little while and uh, Unfortunately, the other thing is our models oftentimes don't handle cold weather very well. And so, you know, I've showed you in, in some of the previous forecast discussions, we've talked about the potential for snow on Sunday. And, and what we're going to see there is is the track is starting to vary a little bit. And uh, at this range with the cold weather, I'm not surprised because the models just do a terrible job oftentimes of handling that. We'll go ahead to that now. First off, let's quickly talk about overnight lows, about what to expect tonight bitterly cold if you're still up with me watching this uh, it really it looks like we're going down below zero over across much of the state according to our high resolution rapid refresh model the HRRR uh, it's it's the highest resolution model we have and uh, you can just see brutal cold uh, invading us by eight o'clock tomorrow morning and uh, we'll see whether that verifies or not but uh, right now it's doing a pretty good job of handling the situation it, it said that we should be down to 18 by now and we're actually down to 19 so it's not bad and even if it's only off by a couple of degrees then we're still in the single digits and uh, you know again this is just bitterly cold temperatures and unfortunately uh, we're, we're looking like we're going to have some of these bitterly cold temperatures continue uh, on into the rest of this. All right, let's take a look really quickly at the maps. I want to talk about the snows that we can expect this weekend. Other than just some scattered flurries potentially over the next few days, really this the next accumulating snow event is going to come on Friday night into Saturday morning and then potentially on Sunday, but there's a question mark on Sunday right now. And we'll go ahead and talk about that. Here we are starting out at about 1 a.m. on uh, Friday night into Saturday morning. You've got a cold front to your west. As I put this through, you notice it gives us a pretty good vigorous shot of of uh, um, of what we call QPF here, quantity of precipitation forecast, but that's just that's just the amount of, of liquid uh, precipitation that it would uh, would would snow down on us. And uh, you know these greens, that's some pretty impressive totals here as as far as this goes. But I want you to notice it stays really confined. Here's about Indianapolis, maybe just a little bit north of Indy, all the way down to uh, really over southeast Indiana. So the areas that got the heaviest snow again, that's on um, this last system. That's the area that look like it's going to get the heaviest snows again. Really, this looks like a very minor snow event for uh, some of you down in the southwest corner of the state, unfortunately. So if you're snow lovers, I know that's a little bit of a bummer, but I'm just telling you what the model says. So then that quickly moves out of here, and here we are by late Sunday, Saturday afternoon, excuse me. <coughs> 
excuse me, and uh, then that's gone. But you notice this next clipper system that's moving down. And, and uh, remember, we, we've seen this clipper system over the models move a couple of different ways. It comes down here. Some of the previous models have wanted to take it more south through here, which would bring a heavier accumulating snow event. And, uh, you know, it's some of the other uh, latest models sort of moderated it a little bit and, and moved it through more like this before it went out to sea. Uh, just take a, a real quick gander at what it's wanting to do now with it. And you see it's basically confining this up into central and northern Indiana and leaving us in the snow-free zone where we might, if we see anything, see more of a rain-snow mix at this point. So um, do, the question we have to ask is how reliable is this this far out? And the answer is I don't think it is. I, I think there's too much... Uh, model discrepancy for for a number of reasons. Um, number one, uh, these models have just not been handling the cold weather that we, we, we have been having lately, uh, not very well at all. And uh, for number two, the GFS model, whenever it comes to mid-range forecasting, four and five days out, is terrible. And all of a sudden it gets a couple of days closer to the event, and then it starts to get on board with what the real picture is. So We'll see. Unfortunately, I don't have the I don't have the Euro model pulled up. The Euro model is also wanting to suppress this a little bit further to the north. She gives us some credence to say, yeah, it's not looking good right now for an accumulating snow event on Sunday for us. But we'll have to see. I think that could easily trend a little bit further south, especially given the fact that low pressures like to ride along the edge of a snowpack. And uh, if that's the case, just knowing some basic meteorology. We're going to have the snowpack being up in here. It would make much more sense to me for that reason to have this low pressure sort of ride down this way along the edge of the snowpack, which would bring some more of those additional accumulating snow totals down. Uh, now, that that's, uh, that's what it was showing really in the past few runs, and today's been a little bit different. So, uh, as I always say, take this with a grain of salt. We'll just have to see what it does. But as of right now, uh, we'll just see. And we'll leave it at that. Uh, the NAM model, really quickly, I just want to show you this. We don't have through Sunday, but I do have through Saturday. And I just want to show you the NAM is pretty much in agreement with the GFS. And it brings us some, uh, some reasonable accumulations, but fairly minor, again, for the southwest portion of the state. All right, let's talk about those snow totals really quickly. Um, here is what the NAM is saying. And again, you know, again, then I said the NAM kind of confined those... Uh, the heavier snow totals out of the southwest portion of the state. That's exactly what you see here. So if I just draw on the map for you what you're looking at here in this first light shaded pink is about one inches. There you're looking at a two inch zone, a three inch zone. The yellows are four. You're about five in here. The darker green is six. So uh, again, this is a model depiction of what could happen. This is not my official forecast, but I want to show it to you. So uh, some of us are looking at potentially a pretty decent accumulating snow event when it comes to this on Saturday. And, uh, you know, as, as far as the exact positioning on where this this uh, line of minor accumulations to decent size accumulations sets up is going to be something that we'll have to fine tune as we get a little bit closer to it. But, you know, for right now, it's sort of got it over the southwest portion of the state with uh, really even even part of the southwest portion of the state here just getting screwed with seeing absolutely nothing. So, uh, but again, this is subject to change. We'll just have to see how it goes. Also, we can take a look at the GFS, and I just want you to show you. GFS gives everybody something, um, but it's not as impressive with its snow totals. Again, here's the NAM. Now you flip to the GFS, and you see it confines the heavier snows more towards our north. So, and uh, we'll just we'll have to see about that. And um, you know, right now we're still. This is this is Wednesday night as I'm recording this. We're still two nights really away from this event, so we've got time to fine-tune these details a little bit more. All right. Let's go ahead. One thing I can show you here is a future radar product uh, from the 4-kilometer NAM. It sees out now into uh, our Saturday event. does not see out to Sunday just yet, but I can put this into motion over the next few days, and here we are with that little batch that's moving through tonight. Scattered snow showers tonight, but again, nothing too big once this band... Uh, 
once this band that we saw on radar has pretty much now moved through the state. Uh, behind this, maybe a few scattered showers, snow showers tonight, but nothing really, nothing too aggressive. This was the main band with that cold front. All right. As you go throughout the day on Thursday, you see the future radar product giving us a little bit of snow shower activity still. But the main brunt of the activity, as I've said, comes on uh, Friday. And so here we put it into motion. Here we are by 1 in the afternoon on Friday. You're starting to see that move into the northern portion of the state. Here we are by uh, about uh, 7 o'clock or so on Friday evening. And you can see that light snow starting to move into the area. And those, those first gray shades you're seeing are some of the light activity. And then very quickly you see snow start to overtake the state. Here's by 10 o'clock and then here's by one o'clock in the morning. Uh, snow has pretty much overtaken the state. Wants to indicate potentially a rain-snow mix with this at the first down in the south part of the state. We'll have to see what that does with that, whether that's true or not. I'm not buying that yet at this point, uh, but we'll see. And then, then you notice very quickly by 4 a.m. and then by 7 a.m. it's mostly gone. All right, high res resolutions uh, snow totals with this not quite as impressive as what we've seen with the others. But again, uh, you know, a, a light dusting for southwest portions of the state. Maybe some two inch pockets in here, but with this, maybe a, a one to three is is more in line with what you can expect. So um, take your pick here, folks. You can pick your poison. Is it going to be a uh, pretty big snow event where it's going to absolutely hammer us or is it going to be more of a minor snow event those are some of the fine details that we have to sort out right now but what we do know is is that um, some accumulating snow is in the forecast potentially for this okay the biggest story with this other than the accumulations obviously uh, is going to be the brutal cold all right take a look at this not only are we going to have potentially low uh, below zero temperatures tonight I'm only forecasting a high of 12 degrees on Thursday. And then down to negative one on Thursday night. Again, cloudy pretty much with some scattered flurries. We may be lucky enough to see a few peaks of sunshine, but it's not going to be a sunny day by any means. There's going to be more clouds than sun. It's going to be very breezy with those northwest winds, 10 to 20 miles an hour. That's why we've got a wind chill advisory in effect for the entire area, and those dangerous wind chills are expected. So bundle up in multiple layers if you're going to get out of there, folks. Then on Friday, hey, it gets a little bit better. Who would have thought that 23 degrees would be better? Then we got that snow moving in on Friday night into Saturday, maybe up to 30 on Saturday. And that's, again, why uh, Future Radar is wanting to indicate possibly a rain-snow changeover, maybe. We'll have to see whether that really pans out or not. And then Sunday, here's what I've done right now. If you viewed my forecast this morning, I believe I had the low 20s for a high on Sunday. Now, all of a sudden, it's went back up to 38. Again, that's because the track of this low is very much in question, you know. Um, are we are we talking about the low coming down and tracking like this or are we going to be talking about the low tracking like this because it's two completely different forecasts based off of that if the low tracks up more like this then we're going to have warmer air pumped into here and that will certainly take us to near uh, near 40 degrees and, and certainly the upper 30s okay if on the other hand what we have is the low come down more like this then we're going to be in the accumulating snow zone and we're going to stay in the 20s so again two extremely different forecasts very challenging to predict what i've done for this is just sort of take a mesh of them right now and we'll go from there so i'm predicting mid to upper 30s on sunday with a rain snow mix possible. We'll fine tune those details a little bit more when we get here. Here's what we do know with good model agreement next week is going to be bitterly cold and we're looking at temperatures down to near zero maybe even below zero again some of these days. All right. One quick tool I want to introduce you to if you go here on Southern Indiana Weather Dot com. Again, you can always get the seven-day forecast. have a new tool available for you. If you click on interactive radar, we've gotten rid of the nasty sort of junky inter uh, interactive radar that we had that only worked sporadically when it wanted to. Uh, it was getting annoying to us, and uh, we have replaced it with a very decent interactive radar. And so you can go to uh, southernindianaweather.com, click on interactive radar, and you've got a decent one now, it is, and it is interactive. You can zoom it in. Uh, we can take a look over here at Louisville where it is snowing right now and you can see you can actually zoom in right down to street level with this you want to know what the temperatures are uh, and the winds are uh, no problem at all you've got that available for you right here all you have to do is click on and off with this and, and you'll have uh, and you'll have these temperatures available for you all right 
wind direction as well. So uh, lots of uh, great things going on here at Southern Indiana Weather. We're looking to expand into some other areas as well. If you're interested in sponsoring uh, this uh, radar, you can uh, contact me for details as well. We are continuing to look for sponsors as we expand our site to give you even more things. So excited about the direction uh, that we're heading with this. All right, that's it for tonight, folks. Bitter, bitter, bitter cold temperatures on the way tonight. So bundle up tomorrow morning and stay safe. Another update will come out again. I'll have updates throughout the day on, fr on Thursday, but another video will come out on Friday, folks. All right, for Southern Indiana Weather, I'm meteorologist Michael Wilhite. Have a great night, folks. Stay safe.